How are you? Hi there. Hi, Karen. I am not even going to attempt to pronounce your surname. So <laughs> tell me who you are, including your wonderful surname and a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, first name is Doris, surname is Kirchmeier. I know it's a little tricky for people to say. And um, I'm trained in various things. Um, I'm sort of trained in fine art, in various complementary therapies, in the environmental uh, field, in management coaching. But I have sort of for the past couple of years, I've sort of really got into writing mainly poetry, but I also wrote a short story with the title Resonance. And I've sort of read it all across the UK. What, what brought you to the Dragoness's Den? Um, I was made redundant end of last year. I used to run an environmental project for people who were unemployed. And it was very successful, but with the budget cuts, all our funding got cut. Um, so I was made redundant and I'm, I really want to sort of set myself up self-employed now. And what feels truly right for me is the writing really to express myself through, through writing, through poetry. What was yeah. your medium? Um, I worked on a very large scale. I sort of, I remember in the beginning when I started um, at Goldsmiths College in London, I sort of had a canvas probably five foot by five foot and then it seemed too small so I made it bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> and in the end I came to sort of, I sort of stopped at ten foot by seven feet, feet because that's just big enough to still get it through a door, you don't have to dismantle it. <laughs> but I did sort of very big paintings, three dimensional paintings and I exhibited them internationally sort of in, in form of installations mm. where the viewer comes into a space where you have all those three-dimensional paintings yeah. and you're almost sort of part of the whole installation and um, so you had quite a shock from the college when they just that they were trying to find places to exhibit your work it it was it was difficult it was also because at the side at the time I sort of did a lot of work on the back of the painting so that it was three-dimensional and things would sort of poke through and I remember at one of the convener groups where we had to sort of present our work to the other students and the tutors and I sort of put my painting up on, on a wall but on a hinge so I opened it up and showed people the back of it and I remember the tutor was completely enraged about this. How, how could I do that? How could I sort of show people the back of a painting? There was a sort of complete taboo at the time, but I still continued with that work. Yeah. Even from paintings, you found this writing that you now do, because you said to me earlier that you don't see yourself as a writer, that you've never trained to be a writer, that you just it just comes out of you. So you've got a, you've got a passion to write. I have a passion to write, yeah, I have no training at all, a background at all in writing or poetry. I like, for example, with my poetry, I have actually I have no idea how to write a poem, but I don't want to learn it either because I think then it almost it goes into a box mm. and you do things in a certain style and you mm. lose your own essence in the writing. So for me, it's just important to express myself and, and say mm. things as they come and feel true to me. But you also like to perform your own poetry in a way, don't you? Yes. yes. So where where did that start from? That was over a couple of years ago. I a talk at an event and um, and it was at the, at the Broadway cinema and, and they had a very, very good microphone. And I remember the moment I sort of heard my voice resonate in a microphone. I thought, ah, oh, that's great. <laughs> and I wanted to do that again. And that's how it sort of... That's kicked it off, yeah. So resonance really sort of struck with you, didn't it? So yeah. the resonance piece, which yeah. is the one that I've heard you read, yeah. and we're going to record that yeah. later. Yeah. Um, tell me a bit about how resonance came about. Um, resonance, well, after this, after I had done the talk at this event, to talk into a microphone again, and then I received an email about um, the Ladyfest Literature Festival in Nottingham, and you could book yourself a 10 minute slot um, to read something. So I emailed them, said I would like to book a 10 minute slot. And at the time, it was six weeks away, the festival. So I thought I've got plenty of time to, to write something. And then I sort of forgot about it. And then two, um, two weeks before the event, emailed me and said, we're putting everything together. What's, what's the title of your story? And at the time, I, I had no story and I had no title, and and um, but 
I was very interested in resonance at the time and I had research about it. And um, so I just emailed them back and said, title of the story is resonance. And then I thought, okay, I've still got two weeks. I can still do this. And I didn't <laughs> until sort of three days before the event. And I suddenly got into a panic and I thought, okay, either now or never, I have to do it now. And I thought it was on a Thursday night. It was about 10 o'clock in the evening. I finally sort of sat down and started to write. And I wrote all through the night until about three or four o'clock in the morning. And that was 20 minutes long. It was twice as long as it should be. So I spent the whole of Friday just cutting it down in half. And on Saturday, I went to the event and I read it and there was no microphone. <laughs> you just had to speak <laughs> without microphones. So all my efforts to speak into a microphone again. But I really love the story. And so I've since read it sort of all across the UK, between sort of Brighton and Scotland, at many different events um, over the past couple of years, yeah. So that story is taking you, because it's really a one-piece moment that's taking you to all these different places. Yes, I've been to lots of different events, like literature festivals. I've given a couple of guest lectures to um, students of philosophy, uh, psychology and literature, um, at Derby College, I have people with eating disorders to share the story with them, inspire them, um, get them to sort of talk and share their story and have a little discussion. Um, on Holy Island in Scotland, um, God, I can't remember now, but there's a long, long They're all on your events. website, aren't yeah. they? So yeah. what, what is your website address if people want to find you? Website is Dori, D-O-R-I, and then the number two and the small K. Mm -hmm dot wordpress.com so it's story 2k dot wordpress dot com and there's the list of all the, the amazing places that you've read it at yes, and also sort of you blog on there i do post some some of my poetry is on mm -hmm. there and 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 a lot of information some information about my background also some of my artwork my illustrations i also used to do some children's murals so lots of different things and there's and I think yeah. if people are interested in hearing that resonance story, we're going to record that and it should okay, be, that will be great. probably a link below this video. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Thank you Thank very you. much for going to talk to me, Dory. Thank you, Karen. Thank you.